In this video, we're going to be talking about color grading, color grading log footage, HLG, what the heck are those formats? We're gonna talk about all of that stuff and we're gonna be talking about a design monitor that Ben Q sent me and how that actually optimizes your workflow and if you need a monitor like that for your video editing workflow. So let's get into it. Hey everybody and welcome back to GAL. If you guys are new to this channel, I do video, photo, and audio tutorials every week. And basically what I like to do is just help you create better content in general. So if you guys are interested in learning more, be sure to subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so you guys are notified. So in this video, Ben Q sent me this awesome designer monitor. And you know, I haven't ever used like really great monitors designed for people that do video editing. I've always used kind of like cheap monitors because most of my content goes on the web. So I haven't really thought about it before. But as I've gotten a little bit more evolved and I started editing more and more, I realized I really should probably invest in a better monitor. So this monitor has been great. Huge shout out to BenQ for sending it to me. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the features that make it great. And then after that, I'm going to be using the monitor to edit log footage and HLG footage. Now I'm gonna go over what the heck those footage are, trust me. But basically, Alistair Robbie, who's a filmmaker, as well as Dave A, who runs a YouTube channel called Post Color Blog, they sent me some log footage that they shot on their Sony cameras, as well as HLG. So before we jump into Premiere Pro, let's first take a close look at some of the awesome features of the BenQ PD2700 Designer Monitor. The first feature about the BenQ monitor that I love the most is the matte finish. There are no reflections when I'm editing, so it's a lot better on my eyes. Secondly, physically, I can lift it up or down to raise it depending on the eye level that I need. And when you raise it up, if you like, you can also turn the monitor to be in a vertical orientation. And this is useful if you have two monitors. The other aspect that I love about the monitor is that it has a built-in USB hub. So I connected the monitor to my computer with a USB cable, and now I can use the monitor to plug in my portable hard drive, as well as my voiceover mic and more just directly underneath the monitor for easy access. In the menu of BenQ, you can also choose from a variety of picture modes, such as Rec. 709, HDR, and much more. And the other bonus item I have here is the BenQ Screen Bar LED Lamp. Now it's powered by USB, so all I have to do is plug it into my computer, and it fits nicely at the top of the monitor, and then I can use the dial to control the temperature and the brightness of the lamp while I edit. And the reason why I like this screen bar is because it eliminates the need for a desk lamp, which can take up extra space on my desk and makes it more of a minimalistic setup. So if you're interested in the BenQ monitor or the screen lamp and wanna check out more of the specs, I've put links in the description box below. So enough about the monitor for now, let's go ahead and explain what log footage is, and then we'll jump into Premiere Pro and show you how to grade it. So what is log? And without going into too much detail, I just want you to understand when to use log and how it works. So any camera that you work with that's a full frame camera, a mirrorless camera, or a high end camera usually has a new log format. Now there's Canon log, there's Sony log, there's Nikon log, there's Fujifilm, F log, all the cameras have it, okay? So if you have one of those cameras, you can turn on the feature to film in that format. Now, when you bring that footage in, you'll notice, huh, why is it so flat and ugly? Well, actually, it has hidden information inside because log is shooting in a high dynamic range format. So you can recover a lot of the highlights and a lot of the shadows much more than than just shooting in the standard format. So you can actually achieve a much more richer image later in post and maybe a little bit more work because there's 50% more work to recover that image and really make it look good. But if you put that time and effort and work it into your workflow, you'll start to see a huge difference in your image and it will just look so much better. Now there's also HLG, which is another type of log format. It's called hybrid log gamma. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, Alistair Robbie, who's a commercial filmmaker, he's shot in this format on his Sony. Here he is to explain sort of the difference between log and HLG and when to use it. So 
HLG is a format that's designed to create a workflow between um, HDR compatible cameras and HDR compatible TVs. Um, so it's a, it's a straight pass through standard that if you set your camera to shoot in HLG, um, you can plug it straight into your HDR television um, that supports HLG and it will play that um, in a way that'll look really great. HLG is designed um, to give you a higher dynamic range, so more color information out of your camera, um, but in a way that doesn't need you to color grade it when you're editing. So Log Gamma allows you to get more color information or more dynamic range um, out of your camera sensor um, and record that in a way that you can edit it. When it comes through into the edit suite, um, you'll often notice that log footage looks a bit milky, um, but through grading and through use of LUTs, um, you can bring that back to something that's going to look amazing. The benefits of shooting with HLG um, is more about a straight through workflow. So you can shoot it and put it on a monitor or put it on a, on a HLG compatible television um, and it'll look great straight away. No grading, no stuffing about. Just lots of, lots of really pretty colors that looks vibrant and, and great straight out of the camera. Um, shooting S-Log, um, the benefits to that are that you get more color data. And in my, in my testing, um, between shooting S-Log, in, in my instance S-Log, um, and HLG, um, S-Log you do seem to get more color information out. Um, I'm specifically shooting S-Log 3. Uh, but if I was doing something where I knew the turnaround was really tight and I didn't have time for a grade or I didn't have time to play with it in post, then potentially I'd look at um, hybrid log gamma as a as something that I can just edit and spit out without touching. All right, Alistair, thanks so much for that helpful information. Now let's jump into Premiere Pro here. I'm inside of the color workspace. And by the way, all the clips that Alistair and Dave from Post Color Blog sent me, I've also included in a link in the description box below so you guys can download it and follow along as I sort of talk through this footage. So to visualize what Alistair was talking about between the difference of log footage and HLG, inside of my timeline here, I have S-log footage and Alistair was kind enough to provide the actual parameters he shot with. So the shutter speed of one over 50, f-stop 4 and an ISO of 800. Now he did the exact same shot in HLG. So if I just move over to this clip, you'll see that it is the same exact parameters, but HLG. Now you can automatically see that HLG is much more fit to just have a quicker workflow. You can see it's already saturated, has a lot more color, but you can see that the highlights are blown out. If I move over to the S-log again, you can see that the highlights, it's not as blown out, so we're able to recover that information. Now to illustrate this better, let's use our Lumetri scopes. Now Lumetri scopes can be a little bit intimidating at first, but the key one that I use all the time for color grading is the Luma waveform. So if you don't see the Luma waveform, which is this graph here with the brightness, click on the wrench tool and just click on Luma waveform. And then for waveform type, just make sure it's Luma. So to read this, this is essentially the brightness map of the image. Now the brightest being up at 100 and the blacks being down to zero. Now to achieve ultimate contrast in your image, the ideal image is as close to 100 as possible without clipping and as close to zero without the black clipping. So to make this image look better, we can actually push up the highlights. Now I like to use the curves. So if you're in the Lumetri color panel, go to curves and you can move this top end to bring this up to add in more brightness without clipping it, of course. And down at the bottom, we can move the curves down to zero. And you can see it just brought in far more contrast and all we did was move this Luma curve inside Lumetri Color. So this was a before and after. But now let's go ahead and go into the HLG and you can see from the Luma waveform that it's already blown out and it's going to be difficult to recover this information up at the top because it's already blown out. So that's the huge benefit of the log versus the HLG. So you can see I can try to do my best just to to lower that a little bit, but it's still pretty blown out. And I can, you know, bring this down to zero, but now it just looks a little bit too saturated. So you can see the difference. This is the log, and then this is the HLG. So that's why I would recommend, if you have the time in your workflow, 
to edit with log because ultimately you're working with a better starting image that you can then enhance in post-production. So let's go ahead and let's move on to just grading log footage in general and using LUTs and the other workflow where you just use your Lumetri color panel without a LUT. So here I have the shot from Alistair, then here I have the shot from Dave, and this is also from Dave, the shot of the lake. This was also shot on a Sony a7R 3 and S-Log, both of these shots, um, as well as Alistair's. So we're dealing with only Sony S-Log right now. So one workflow method is to start from an adjustment layer and you apply a LUT to the adjustment layer to correct the footage. So let me just create an adjustment layer here and drag and drop it on top of the footage and then extend it out to the end of the clip. And now this is where I applied a free LUT that I got from Ground Control, which is um, a pretty cool site where you can get free LUTs for particular types of log footage. So I downloaded this free S-Log3 to Rec709 LUT and you can download it too if you like. So basically I went up to first make sure it's selected. I went up to basic correction under input LUT from the dropdown. I just select browse and then I downloaded the S-Log to Rec709. And by the way, Rec709 is just the broadcast standard for you know color grading. It's going to look a lot more saturated and nice. And it's just a, a good mode to have your color in when you're editing. So immediately you can see it's just, it added so much more vibrancy. So if I turn this off and then on, now here's the cool part. If we look at the Luma waveform compared to HLG, there is far more data here to recover. It's clipped a little bit, but not nearly as much as the HLG. Far more information is recoverable. It's a bit saturated in this vector scope, but we can fix that at the clip level. Now by using the Lumetri color panel, we can then make adjustments with these sliders, such as reducing the saturation a bit, so that way it's inside the broadcast line there, and we can recover some of the highlights just by pushing down the highlights to our liking, which is so much better than HLG. But now, since the adjustment layer affects everything underneath, if I scroll over, you can see what it did to the flower shot here. So if I turn off the adjustment layer, this is what it was before, kind of that milky color that Alistair was talking about. But then when I turn it off, it's like far more vibrant. Now I may want to make a few more changes to this. So I just go to the clip level. And then here, I just want to reduce the saturation just a tad because the red was a bit too hot. And then you can add some more contrast in if you need to. You can reduce some of the highlights just a tad. You can bring down some of the blacks a little bit. And it starts to look a little bit more vibrant, right? Um, and if I turn off what I did, that's what it was with the LUT. And this is when I added corrections at the clip level. So even if you apply a LUT, you still might need to make some adjustments using just the Lumetri color panel and keeping an eye on everything that's going on here. I wouldn't get too hung up on this whole broadcast standard thing. Again, only really worry about that if you're really editing commercial work that's going to be on TV. You just want to be extra mindful. If this is just going on Facebook or YouTube, like... If this red is just a little bit out, don't, you know, don't fret about it, okay? Again, you, you know, you don't need to have the waveform go all the way down to zero. If you wanted to, you could go to the curves and you can really bring this down a lot more to bring in a lot more saturation. It really just depends on the look that you're going for. So I think that, you know, around here is, is good for my liking. So now let's go to this third shot because this is interesting here. I think that this looks really bad because the LUT just completely blew out the sky. So in some cases, the LUT actually is an inhibitor to your process and it doesn't actually work. So in this case, I'm not actually going to use the LUT. I'm just going to use Lumetri Color at the clip level. So I'm just going to roll this adjustment layer back. And by the way, a LUT is just basic math. It's called a lookup table, and when you apply it to a clip, it just like recalculates the image to have a different output. Um, so that's why the, the LUT doesn't work on every single clip because it's just a mathematical equation. It's not smart enough to recognize if it's going to blow out a particular shot versus another. It's just the same equation and it applies it to all. 
and I'm going to just start from scratch. So this is another way of doing color grading with, with log footage. You don't need to start from a LUT. So what I'm going to do is just work from the curve. So I'm going to boost up the sky as much as I can without it getting blown out. And I'm going to bring in the blacks down as much as I can. And then from creative, I'm gonna add in some vibrancy and up at basic correction, a little bit of contrast and we reduce the highlights just a tad. And now if I turn the effects off, you can see, look how milky and flat it was before and then on. And now this looks just far better than it did if I had the LUT on top and removed this. So this is with the LUT and then this is without the LUT. So I think that, you know, it definitely depends on the clip. I think having the adjustment layer, if you're working on a film that has a bunch of different shots that were in the same sort of lighting and scene, it could work really well to use this adjustment layer and then just make minor adjustments at the clip level. But if you're dealing with like completely different scenes, sometimes it can get a little difficult and you may just need to correct at the clip level without the LUT on the adjustment layer. So hopefully that makes sense. And don't forget, if you have any questions at all, be sure to leave a comment below. So once again, a huge shout out to Alistair Robbie and Dave A for providing this footage to really make this tutorial complete. I couldn't have done it without you guys and your expertise, so much appreciated. If you guys have any questions or want me to elaborate any further on anything that I talked about in this video, be sure to leave a comment below. So that's it, you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. You know you wanna feel it You know you wanna see it Let your body go to flow Let your body move you